In November 2019, Jesus College, Cambridge University, agreed to repatriate the cockerel back to the Benin Kingdom. But this is not the first time members of the British public have rejected the artifacts and attempted to return them back to their rightful owners. In 2014, Chief Steve Dunstan and Mark Walker, uh, led by some other Edo delegates, also took some artifacts back to the Obra of Benin. This is what you return? Yes. yes. And I'm here to, to, today to have a conversation with Chief to see to talk about this trend. Is it that the British public will have to reject the artifacts for the Beninese to get their hands? Steve will tell us that in the next half an hour. Hi Chief, thank you very Hello. much for having us. Thanks thank for you. coming. Chief, another memorable piece of artifact has been returned to the Benin Kingdom. But this time it's it's by the trend of rejection. You know, the, the students in Jesus College say, no, we don't want to have this. We want to return this back to the right flow. Yes. Yeah. Do you see a trend uh, before the institutions make up their mind that uh, members of the British public and the smaller institutions will start uh, repatriating artifacts? Um, there's certainly been a change in recent uh, months, in recent years. Um, I think the, um, the publicity of Mark Walker returning those items back in 2014 has, has generated some enthusiasm amongst certain organisations, but re really, a lot of young people and the, uh, the students at Cambridge University are a good example. You know, there was a quite heated debate about returning these items, but they did vote about three years ago to return the cockerel. Which has been returned now? No. The cockerel is still in the possession of Cambridge University, so they're waiting to actually hand that over. Okay. Um, what circumstance? I mean, it's taken three years for this situation to evolve, but um, they do intend to hand it over. We don't know if that will take place in the UK or Nigeria. You knew about the besides the fact you led the delegation with Mark Walker yep. to return the first set of activists in 2014. Did you know about the cockerel before now? No, no. no. I, I knew about the cockerel three years ago. Because the head of the students' union, I forget his name, uh, Simpson I believe, he, he contacted me. He'd heard about the repatriation of the two, the, the, these two artifacts. Walker Brothers. Yes. And through my website he contacted me to say there's another artifact at Jesus College. Um, and he invited me, he invited me to uh, Jesus College to see the cockerel because the students' union did vote to repatriate um, that item which was left since 1930 by a, uh, a gentleman who was actually on the punitive expedition of 1897. Um, and it's been in the, in the dining hall of Jesus College since. On, when, when I arrived on that day, it had been removed. Um, whether I knew, I knew I was coming, but, but they removed it for the first time since 1930, much to the disappointment of the, the head of the student union. But since then, there's been lots of publicity, um, and it's the management of, of, uh, of Jesus College have decided to repatriate. But it hasn't exactly been handed over yet. So the, the repatriation has not happened no, yet. No. But um, did you, um, when you said he contacted you, was that before you returned or after the return? After. After the return. Yes. So he's seen that. Uh, the, the artifacts you returned yes. with Mr. Mark Walker, which I'm showing you again, yeah. got to the Arbor of Benin. Yeah. Uh, he was quite satisfied. Yes. And then he contacted the other the right. But uh, when did the students, uh, as far as you know, when did the students of Cambridge University uh, became aware that this cockerel here does not belong to us? Well, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you when it happened. Um, I'm probably going back about six years now, and there was a incident at Oxford University where there was a statue of an old British colonial explorer. I can't remember which one it was. Okay, there's many of them. But, but, yeah, yeah, but, but uh, the students felt as though this, this represented um, a, a, bad, a bad side of um, British exploration and colonisation. They wanted the statue to be torn down. And it created publicity in the Indian press. And I think as a result of this, Cambridge then realised that actually this Ben and Bryce okay. sitting in Jesus College since 1930 and that created more of a, a conversation because that got the ball rolling for a, a vote by the students. So, so Cambridge did not want the bad publicity having seen no, us? No, they didn't. 
So it's, is it this bad publicity that is forcing, um, you know, publicizing this bad publicity and, and nobody wants to, to be associated with, with such history? There's, there's, I believe there's a wave of change now. We're not talking about climate change and, so, and new energy. We want to put, I think the, the public wish to put to bed the wrongs of the past. Good, good way to put it. Um, and it's not easy where the betting blinds are concerned. Um, they, I think people believe they should go back, but the institutions, um, they've had them for many years, and to be honest, they've done a good job protecting these items. Nobody's there disputing Yeah, and, and opening their doors to, mem to many tourists to, to view things. You know, um, over the years, I am quite aware, not, not so sure of the dates, but there have been delegates from the Obers Palace who, was, who have attended Cambridge University to see the cockerel, uh, to talk to the students about the cockerel. When did, was, was this after, you know, the students have identified that we, we need to send these back, yes, let's get after. to know more about... It was after. Uh, so the students contacted the palace themselves? Uh, no, I, I believe it was the, the management, I, I don't know, I'm just purely That's surmising, simple. that the management wished to, wished to hand over, so they've contacted the royal household in Benin, to look at what's going to happen, invite them back over here for a, 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 to view the item and discuss the way ahead. No, 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 this was not an education. This was purely to discuss the, the new home of the Cockerham. Okay, okay. To my knowledge. Okay, okay. And you, you weren't involved? I was not involved. Your, your involvement with this Cockerham had to do with... The student, you, the head of the student union invited me um, to view it, and explain the difficulties he had to put his case to the students, but after that I've not been involved at all where the management was concerned. Were you able to talk to the students? No, I, I wasn't there for the vote. I was there, I, I spoke to the students, and they were really wonderful students to be honest, very well spoken and highly educated and pleasure to be in their company. <laughs> you, know, you can imagine at Cambridge, yeah. um, they would do a terrific job um, of trying to repatriate this couple. So, the, so I, I take it now that members of the British or you know the British public are more in tune if, if they have any piece of this artifact, whatever is within their power, they want to get it back. But, but when you talk about the British public, um, when I came back from repatriating those two in 2014, yes. I created a press release which I sent to all national newspapers. Not one was interested in publishing anything. That was kind of a shock to me. And I did speak to uh, the Sun, the Sun journalist on the Sunday night, and he, he felt though there isn't an interest in the British public. It needs the institutions, it needs Cambridge University students to generate the publicity of actually what's happened. The inter there's no interest in the institutions no. to return. No, in the, uh, in the institutions I believe there is now an interest, but I don't think there's an interest amongst the British public. Okay. Okay. So that, 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 that clarifies things. And, and now there's a push from the institutions to convince? Yes, it, yes there is. So any publicity now for these, is, I look at it as good publicity because it was the British stole these items and they've not been returned. That's still the dilemma. That, that, and I, th there's books about this. I've, I have met several English, yeah. uh, well, well-read English people who, yeah. who were very blunt, like you, to say we looted this kingdom, yes. took all their stuff, and, yeah. and it's time to give it back. Yes, absolutely right. Yeah. And as a journalist, um, Alex from the New York Times, he's just wrote an article which is due out in early January, actually depicting exactly what we said, highlighting the whole story about the bronzes and the repatriation and, and injustice that uh, still exists. Chunk of history of Benin 
um, was removed and it hasn't been replaced. So for any of these items to come back, it feels like they're coming home. It's part of their history coming home. Um, the passion and emotion in the faces was quite extraordinary. Um, now, it's only when you actually see it, it's tangible, the, the, the depth of feeling that these items um, are worth. It struck you. Yeah, it did struck me. And, and that is their spiritual home, and that's where they should be. And for you, um, what, what does it mean for you? Is it, um, what does it mean for me? Um, is there some satisfaction to say, uh, I did this? Uh, at no, least I, mean, I no, did well, that. Yeah, there, there is an element of satisfaction because it really wasn't a too difficult try to get these items back. Um, there's been politicians over here that's trying to get some of these back for the 100th anniversary of the, um, of the massacre. That was two. That was the uh, 18. That was 1997. Yeah, Bernie Grant. Yeah. He really tried hard to get the British Museum to release some of these, just as a, as a, as a peaceful gesture. But no, they, they they would not release any. So to get two back with the help of Mark Walker um, was enormous satisfaction. But it, 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 it acts as a catalyst for these other institutions to start discussing. And now the British Museum are looking at returning 300 on a on a annual sort of loan basis. For is, three that, years. Is, is that is that uh, is that concretized? Is that on stone yet to say 300? How many yes. artifacts have you been in? I, I don't know how. There's 40 out on display inside the British Museum. There's many hundreds in the basement. Um, I don't know how many they hold. But President Macron in France uh, returned, I think, 33. There's, uh, there's a group that's formed in the Netherlands uh, last year with members of institutions that hold these items around the world. A regular meeting there with you. I've somehow returned the webinars on loan basis. I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'm favoured on loan because you know, what happens when the loan period finishes, we're back to square one. Yes. Um, so, so maybe they're looking at the loan period as a trial, maybe testing security of where they're going to place these and see what happens. It's very unclear to members of the public how that's going to work. There's, yeah. very, there's very little information about this loan arrangement, yeah. but, it, but it's, it's, it's out there. Oh, we're talking about return of Benin artifacts. These artifacts, when returned, as far as you know, how much benefit will this return uh, give to the Benin? I always believe that if you've got a, an understanding of one's history, um, especially if it's been returned via the, uh, the, the, the bronzes, then you develop a sense of well-being and happiness. And I believe that it will give the whole kingdom a huge lift. In, in terms of financial, uh, people speculate about the tourism. It will draw tourism yeah. to the Benin Kingdom. Yeah. It would, it, I, I like to not uh, speculate on the advantages. Maybe people like you who are, who are in there can say, look, the Benin people can benefit like this. Yeah. Yeah. That, that, that's what we want to hear. <laughs> oh, I mean, oh, you mentioned tourism. I, I once was asked to do a presentation on tourism potential in Nigeria. And I looked into this really in depth. Um, Many other things need to be addressed first to draw in tourism in Nigeria. Uh, I, could, I could go off a tangent now and talk about that. So, uh, so I probably won't. But, but certainly, if there are um, Benin bronzes in Benin City and tourists should come, they would always want to see these bronzes. Are you still involved uh, in, in any capacity in trying to help repatriate more Benin um, because of personal changes in my life, um, and now caring for mum, I've taken a step back. But I'm always open to repatriating Benny Bronzes. And so I've kept the website going. If there's any more contacts via that, I'm always... And I'll be offering my services to the OBA, if, if you'd like them, for any hand and over ceremony to take place. Because my objective is to get them all back. And the cock who is sitting here is, is, a, is a golden nugget <laughs> for publicity. You know? and, a, and there should be a big hands and over ceremony in the UK and another one in Nigeria. You know, thank you very much. But before before I even leave you, I want to ask, the, the, they, the way the cockerel, you know, the, the whole process of the cockerel agreeing to return it, the minute the student kicked off about it, I have told research shows in 2016, 
it was taken off this year. Why, why is that? It did just the I mayor mentioned no, that I don't, I don't, we don't want this year. I don't know. Um, maybe the management decided this was a hot potato. Let's just take it off display for the time being whilst they discuss the um, handover. But at that stage, there'd been no contact by the management and the Royal Palace. So the cockles had to put in a safe place. <laughs> and there was another one identical, it's, it's on display in the British Museum. Yeah, right now? A cockle, yeah. And it's still from the it's still from the Billion Kingdom? Yes. Yeah. God. One day. There's two of everything. One day. <laughs> Chief Steve Dodson, you know, thanks for having us. Now, I, I, I keep, as soon as I want to get up, another question comes. You know, with regards to the Benin branches, you've been to Benin, I've been to Igun Street. And uh, I've spoken to the bronze casters who knew about the history. And they said, back in the days, the Benins casted bronzes when a judgment was made. You know, so if something happened in the land that's never happened before, the other will request that they cast the bronze. And they had uh, bronze readers. So each, each bronze, oh, you know, yeah. when that crime came, that, that was our record yeah. keeping. How much would we be, uh, you, how, how, how much do you think we've been affected? by these records being taken? Yes, that's a very good point. Um, I mean, I know that a lot of dances and rituals in the royal courts were depicted in the bronzes, but that's another, another angle I've not heard before. But that's a good example of the history of Benin and their, and their, and their city. Uh, and we could discover new, completely new um, parts of the history that we were unaware of. Would you think there's any way they could this can be compensated for to say all your history taken away and you had to start all over again. I mean, compensation is a difficult, a difficult word where this is concerned um, because what you've also got is that these items are valuable. So we're talking, we're asking institutions around the world, please repatriate and send them back. Well, it may have cost them five or six million in the first place to buy these. To buy these. So. Yes, it's, a, it's a difficult one. It's a great, it's a real great area. Yeah. But one day we hope to have the bronze. Yeah, I, I think that will happen one day. Um, because we've now, the change has happened. The we've opera waited a long time for this. Yes, the, this, this opera is very proactive. It's a great idea. In that regard as well. I'm really pleased to hear that. And I understand he's actually got a location already set up for the museum. They're, they're building a museum that, that can house uh, the, the, the artifacts in the quality they've been kept. In the western, I'm pleased to hear that. In the western, yeah, they should be. Chief Steve, uh, Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Thank you for you. taking time out. You're more than welcome. Thank much. you very much. Thank we'll be here all over and over again. You can say hello to the Edo people. They don't see you all the time. <laughs> hello, the Edo people. Well, good memories of uh, your hospitality many years ago. Thank Happy you very New Year much. to you all. Okay. Merry Christmas. villager handed me a letter, yes. so I shoved it in the car, got on the boat. I read that letter that night and it was, please help us restore the Benny Bronzes. Do you have that? No. I haven't thrown it away, I've got it somewhere, it's probably in the somewhere. Um, I didn't throw anything away. That's what caused me to do research, I come back to the website and they, they followed this, and that's features in the article. There's a book being it's been commissioned and the guy is writing now, a guy called Barnaby Phillips. Yeah. Uh, I've spent a long time with him and he, he'll be quite proactive for this as well. I'll be calling you if you don't call me. Yeah. <laughs>